Hi, this is Misha. In this video is revisiting the Italian 1889 Bodio Revolver. And I decided to do another video. We have this gun featured in our Italian service sidearms video. This is the enlisted, our trooper model. It has about a four and a half inch octagonal barrel. It is double and single action. It has this trigger that actually folds up into the frame to release it. Just pull the hammer back. And now you can either fire in single or double action. This does not have a swing out cylinder. Instead, it's got a loading gate. And if you pull the trigger, you can load it that way. There's a rod into the barrel here. Put the loading gate back up and your hammer is back to being active. The Bodio was named after Carlo Bodio, which was a, really the head of a commission that ended up with this gun because this gun is a conglomeration of features uh, borrowed <laughs> from other guns of the era. It was first adopted in Italy in 1891 and production would continue at a quick pace until about 1896. However, at that time Italy toyed with the idea of going to an automatic pistol. In fact, the Italian Navy purchased several thousand C96 broom handle Mausers from Germany. But this never came to pass. They never adopted the broom handle in a large way. So they kept using the Bodio. Production would slow though until 1910, 1911 with the Italian Turkish war. And then they would ramp it up. And of course it would get ramped up again for World War I. Now this was the enlisted version, sometimes known as the type A. There was another version known as the officer's model or type B. And as you can see, it has several differences. The barrel is shorter. Barrel link lengths on these do vary. This is about a four inch barrel, so it's a little, little more than half an inch shorter than the other one. It is a round barrel, obviously, not uh, octagonal. We have a fixed round trigger guard with a more traditional trigger system. Still is double and single action. We still have a loading gate with that. And the grip is pretty much the same. Now, whereas the enlisted model was officially adopted by the Italian military and was issued to troopers, the officer's model was not. Italian officers of the day, which was not an uncommon practice, the same thing happened in Japan and other nations, the officers were expected to purchase their sidearms, and this Bodio version was made available, but it was not officially adopted by the Italian military, even though a number were in, were in service. They would produce these in smaller numbers than the enlisted model and then actually cancel, discontinue production altogether in 1906, although many would still be around for World War I and then afterwards. These both fire the 10.35 cartridge, sometimes called 10.4 millimeter Bodio. And they were manufactured by many, many different companies over the years. But most all of them went through Brescia for final proof testing. In fact, during World War I, several would be made in Spain to supplement Italian production. And this was a weapon well suited for Spanish manufacturing, much like the French Ruby, because it's a solid frame gun. Actually, this frame is made of iron, not even steel, although, of course, the cylinder and barrel are steel. It's large, bulky parts, overbuilt. So it was well suited for Spanish, you know, uh, cottage production of the era. Now, after World War I, these guns had remained in service. Now, what's interesting, if you check out our other Italian handguns video, you'll see 
the 1910 Glycenti, and then later the 1915 Beretta, which were both automatic pistols firing 9x19 Glycenti, which were supposed to replace this, but they never really did. The Bodeo would remain in service after World War I. Now, when final production went into, it was over with these, there's a little bit of a contention. It seems like the last brand new guns probably came out around 1925. However, 1925, 1926, a lot of older guns which were worn out from use in World War I were refurbished and restamped with a new date of 1925, 1926. So the date on top will be that as opposed to the original date. There seems like there was an one final either brand new production run or more likely run of refurbishment in 1929 through 1931. And these would be the last dated Bodeos. In total, about 200,000 were produced. And these would not actually be declared obsolete until the end of World War II, 1945. So the Bodeo, originally a gun developed in the black powder era, would not be retired until the end of World War II. It's worth noting that they did upgrade the cartridge to fire using smokeless powder around 1898-1899. So these were strong enough to fire a smokeless powder version of the 10.35 Bodeo cartridge. But today, finding cartridges, you basically have to reload. And as you might guess, I'm not a reloader. So, you know, this is uh, not really something either of these that I would shoot, although they're both in perfectly good condition. I have would, would, would trust to fire both of them, although uh, ammo is not really available. The officer's model is definitely a little bit lighter, has a little bit more compact grip, shorter barrel, and it has a little more refinements. But since these weren't officially adopted by the military, quality can vary wildly between different models and makes. But uh, they're interesting guns and uh, part of Italian military history to be sure. Very smooth action on this one. But yeah, I thought we'd just revisit this briefly. If you have any questions, uh, please post them below. We really appreciate you tuning in and please check back soon for more hopefully interesting videos. This is Misha and we'll catch you next time.